Hi, Trini. I'm so excited. I've I'm been s- looking forward to this. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. I, since I've known you, I've wanted to get in your closet. I know. And I think um, I do have, you know, 16 closets. Let me, let's just, 16? this is confessions. I've got 16 closets. Do you think that's expensive? <gasps> That's like going to AA and saying, I'm an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> seriously, because it's something that, you, you you know, you always ask me, you always ask me, Lucy, you know, about what, what's in that cupboard and what's in that cupboard. Mm-hmm. So this is the tops cupboard. This is one of my most into- important cupboards. And you've got to remember that I, I'm trying to justify myself. I work in clothing and I've been doing lots of styling for years and clothes are my inspiration for everything, for my makeup colors, for everything. Um, and so... They are cherished things I've had between 35 years? No. 30 years and last week. So how many shirts do you think you have in here? In here or in, in total? Well, this is confession time. All right, fine. So let's just very, very quickly. I mean, I have no idea. About 150. Wow. Uh, yeah, I do. And, and yeah, I do. How would you organize them? That's a lot to keep track of. Organization is key. If your wardrobe is this big or this big, to me, there's two really important things. There's a color grading, because whenever we're looking for something, we can never find it, however big or small our wardrobe is. So color grading really helps you think, if I'm religious and stick to that, I'll always know where it is. Tell me about your hangers. Oh, my hangers. Huggable hangers. There are lots of hangers like this on Amazon, but the real true huggable hangers, when you do this, they won't break. The, uh, the fake ones break. But the joy of them, is that it allows you to hang quite a lot of things. So I look down here, I can, I'm hanging quite a lot. Nothing's getting, having a fight with the other hanger. And my bet noir in any wardrobe organization are, um, are metal hangers. You know, those just, once you get from the dry cleaner, because they pull you up your clothes, they don't let clothes hang properly. They have fights with each other in the wardrobe. I, I, whenever I see one, I have a heart palpitation. So you can get rid of that as soon as you pick up your dry cleaning? As soon as, out, in. Yes. Okay, next question. Which is your favourite shirt in here? Oh, okay. This is probably the shirt that um, you've seen the most. This is a Stella McCartney shirt that I always wear when I'm tired. It's like my best foundation, but it's not that. It's more than that. It's like my BFF. It is my BFF. In fact, I based the concept of BFF on this. I wanted that shimmer, you know, looking fabulousness in two seconds, which is what BFF does for you. But I put this on with no makeup and I'll feel well. It goes with every single color. I've worn it so often that it's ripped endlessly. I, when I first bought it, it was incredibly expensive and I ripped it quite quickly and I kept it in the bottom. You know, when you've ripped something, it's in the bottom of the cover by the dust. Six months later, I pulled out and I thought, I love this shirt, I must do something. I went on to Bestiaire Collective the um, secondhand uh, shop online, and I put Lurex Stella McCartney shirt, and it came up Lurex Stella McCartney shirt in a 40. I bought it in a 38, too small, but you know that feeling you love something in the shop and it's a bit tight, you don't mind. So I got a second. So I do actually have two, but um, I swapped them out because then I got somebody to sew the rip back. So this one is the original, I think. And I'm gonna put that down there with my metallics because it was in the wrong place. Okay, so talk us through metallics. Oh, metallics. Okay, let's talk double metallics. So I've got general metallics here. So that is a Topshop boutique metallic shirt, and I'll wear that because I don't like the sleeve length, because for me, I look like somebody who's on an American bowling alley and they work there, that kind of shirt, or a baseball shirt. Is that your opinion based on the shirt length or your shape? My shape, very good point, because for me, I can wear that length sleeve, but it just doesn't suit my style. I think that's more what it is. So I use this shirt for, more for winter when I put a jacket over it or, or spring, but not hot, hot summer. And it's just a beautiful, soft, shimmery gold. So I love that. And I like the fabrication of it. This is uh, Calvin Klein, uh, sequin bolero, and uh, not bolero, but the sequin, sort of, not a corset top, but it's, it's fitted with a zip here. And What's, why this was such a good investment for me is it will never not suit me because it's round-necked, it covers my arms, I can wear this one at 80. 
Um, it's got beautiful sequin, really wonderful paillette, and they're not gonna come off because it's been sewn down incredibly well. Then another one which I have worn endlessly is by MSGN. I always think it sounds like Chinese food poisoning, but it's a wonderful Italian brand. And I have worn this over so many things, under so many things, and it's the most beautiful sort of stretchy sequin. And all of my high street sequin tops end there because I've, it doesn't work, but these end here. And that's the difference generally for me between designer and high street. This is Trini yeah. Classic. This is Trini Classic and I wear it different ways. So if I'm wearing it with a coat in winter, I do quite like the sequin up there. Um, and then I'll wear a really clean, simple jacket and you'll get the polar neck effect, which works best with like a man's covert coat. So I kind of just love that look there. It's very cool. Yeah, and then I, what I really like about it, like I was saying before, because the sleeves come out, it adds detail to a cuff. And I think when you want to kind of bring a coat to life that might be a real classic, having that cuff come out and do something to the coat, for me, is, is a lovely joy. Daytime, I'll do that. Nighttime, I feel sometimes constricted by the polar neck, like I discussed earlier. So I will unzip it at the back, and I sort of just tuck it in like that and wear it more clean. That's more casual. And it just gives it, it's a sort of, yeah, maybe it's more casual, but then if I'm going out for dinner, I might want to really amp it up with a bit of makeup. Okay, so if I was wearing sequins, I might be confused as what to do, because I wouldn't want it to be too much. Or so too much shimmer. Too much makeup. Mm. So what would be the best thing to do? Well, I think you have a point, because really with shimmer and with sequins, you don't necessarily need a huge amount of makeup. You want something that's a wowser. So I probably would do like a bit of a Sasha, which has got a bit of shimmer in it. It's a lip love. And I, what I kind of love about Sasha, I'm gonna mush it together right to get into the, that color, is it gives a soft pink, but I don't mind exaggerating the shimmer. I, perhaps I wouldn't do it on my eyes. So you keep your eyes quite nude? Yeah and I'll keep the attention there, like that. Clean, but bright. So this is an Isabel Morant top, which I forgot I bought. You know, isn't that lovely? I bought it in sale at Harvey Nichols last week. I'd seen it for six months, loving it. It was a hideous fortune, like 600 pounds, and I kept thinking, so overpriced. Kept putting it on, kept loving it, and I got it in a sale at Harvey Nichols for 160 pounds um, last week. So it was a real bargain, and it will be a classic, and I can wear it loose, or I can wear it tucked in, I can wear it belted. Um, it's got a really, really long sleeve again, and I quite like the stretch sleeve at the end. And it's a perfect colour sequin, and it's a perfect size paillette. So I spy a template in there. Yes, there is a template in there. This is um, a part of a top and bottom, and this again, to me, is a timeless piece. It's temperly, and I could dress it down, like I could wear it today with these jeans, and then I can dress it up with a skirt. When you buy something, is it important to you that you can wear it more than one way? The best piece of my wardrobe are pieces I can wear many different ways. Uh, there are some things in my wardrobe that I only wear a certain way and they're really special pieces and I might bring them out three times a year. So that's why my wardrobes are doing this because there are those pieces and they're sort of, to me, in my mind, collector's pieces. They're pieces I'll pass on to Lila and they're just a beautiful thing. And when I was really working just in fashion, even though I was doing the Telegraph and talking about high street and mid and not just you know, not just high street, not just expensive. I spent a lot more money on clothes than I do now, and I collected some some great things, which I'd like to keep if I can. Okay, so Trini, my wardrobe is slightly smaller than yours, yep. and when I buy something, I have to think about what will it go with? Because yep. if it's just gonna live in my wardrobe and I can't wear it because I don't have the right item to go with it, is that something you consider, or do you just buy knowing that you can fit it in? Every time I buy something, I think, where will it fit in my wardrobe? Every time I buy anything, um, and I think that's a discipline that I've learned over the years because I have had years of buying things which then sat there because there was no friends for them in the wardrobe. They were alone at the party. And I want them always to have a joyous um, connection with other friends in my wardrobe. So take me back to shirts now. Yes, um, shirts. At the moment you wear quite a lot of Serena Butte. Is this a new designer you've discovered? This is a designer who... Um, I went to school with her, Serena, and when I was 11, she was 14 or 15, and she was my sister's 
best friend. She then did Anonymous, which is a lovely brand, and then she did Serena Beauty, and she started that two years ago, and she had these lovely floppy trousers. I saw her wear them, and I was thinking, oh, I love those so much. So I buy them, I buy them in the sale. She also gives me um, a discount, and I've just collected them, and, and they're like a uniform for me. I wear them generally winter, spring, and autumn. In the summer, wear them a little bit less. So the one I wear the most, ooh, so difficult. So this is beautiful. I love this one. This is that beautiful, I wore this in India on my trip and the trousers are quite wide but not totally wide and I tuck in the front and I have the back hanging out. This is my mammoth trouser width. I know we're talking about shirts but when I wear that clean navy with that really wide trouser and a white trainer I feel cool, I feel timeless, I feel ageless and that is my like ticking every box way of dressing and comfortable. And navy's one of your favorite shades, right? So much, but there's the wrong or right navy. So that's quite a good navy. It's a clean, clear navy. This is a kind of what I call a purpley navy. It's more French navy. And that is like nearly a midnight navy. And that can be slightly draining for you because it's so close to black. So when I wear that, this is actually, whilst we're here, um, Ooh, this is a real, I know, and I just found this the other day. This is a Chloe shirt from, when Phoebe was a Chloe. <laughs> I've joined, I've really followed Phoebe around, but this is when Phoebe was a Chloe. And I love this. And I had, I'd literally worn it every day about seven years ago. And then somehow I lost it and I found it again. What's the most expensive thing in this wardrobe? Come on, we all wanna know. This. I got it when Phoebe was still designing and I much prefer her designs because I felt they're more flattering for women than Hedy Slimane. Um, and there's a killer in this because I um, was given it and I loved it. And I just thought with the right makeup on, um, it has that luster black velvet and the shape is beautiful and it, it feels incredibly expensive. You know, some expensive things don't look expensive, but I feel really, I could wear it with black jeans and it looks incredibly chic. And what happened was I put on some weight and the sleeve got too tight and I couldn't wear it anymore. And it was like, oh my God, because I know this is so beautiful and cherished. What's going to happen? I can't give it away. I love it too much. It was given to me by somebody I love. It's all very difficult. So I have a seamstress called S. Susanna, who I kind of have a, not a love-hate relationship with, but it's like, it's like she's my, you know, she's sort of my drug dealer. I mean, I've had her in my life for so many years and we have, you know, it's my addiction to wanting things to fit perfectly. So what she did, she got some, this is a very beautiful black velvet. It's a silk black velvet. So if you look really close up, you can see she's done a V indent of another piece of black velvet and it gets from the elbow where it fit me to um, under the arm, it gets bigger. And that extra inch and a half allows me to wear it. So. I always think that if you've got something really beautiful and it's too small, you can either cut out the lining inside if that's what's constricting it, or consider going finding a similar fabric and just giving yourself a breathing space there. It's a very good tip. In the contrast to that, what's the cheapest thing in here? Oh my God, the cheapest thing which I wear so much, so much. I mean, this might not be the cheapest thing, there might be cheaper things. This is a piece that I wear under 50% of my summer wardrobe, and you might have seen it because you always say to me, where's that little top from? It's a, I don't even think it's real silk, but actually it feels like it could be. It's this double layer, but I don't feel sweaty in it. And it's from Zara and it costs 12 pounds. Wow. And I wish I'd bought 10. Um, it's I did, always the way, isn't it's it? It's always the way. And it just, I love the drape. I love the fact that I can tuck it in at the front and it will hang out the back. I love the fact the fabric is so thin so I can put on a really thin jacket on top and there's nothing underneath to constrict that jacket, but I still get that beautiful shape at the front. I can put necklaces over it that I can layer. There's nothing I can't do with this top. Um, and yeah, so I love it. I mean, if I, whenever I travel, I usually wear it when I'm traveling, but if I, if I travel, I always, um, let's say I'm taking check luggage, I will always put this in hand luggage, um, along with perhaps a really expensive dress, let's say I go to a wedding, because I would, couldn't bear to lose it. Trini. Yes. I spice stripes. I love a stripe. Stripes are timeless. Stripes are a fantastic way for women to do that sort of cool age of stress dressing. If you look at French women, they do the Breton stripe all the time, and they'll have a lovely navy base of jeans and a Breton stripe and red lip, and I think it's such a chic look and elegant through the ages. I think that the way you wear your stripes is important. For me, I like stripes that go up and down. If I do stripes that go across, I like it to be tight around the neck 
What I do not like in a stripe is that kind of M&S stripe across with a slightly loose neckline because I think that can be oddly aging. For me, what's more important in the stripe is the distance of the stripe, the color of the stripe, and what else is on the stripe. So you can just do a normal uh, stripe shirt. Okay, that is, although it's Celine, this is a normal, this is a, an old fashioned grandma shirt. What I love about this shirt, and I bought this shirt over the years, and also the shirts really improved because this was a classic Celine shirt and it was always very um, uh, difficult to tuck in. So she always would have it that you'd wear it open. And I love to tuck in the front of my shirts and take out the back. So what I tend to do is if they don't have a slit at the side, I will with a Susanna make a slit to my waist so I can tuck in the front front and have the back hanging out which will give a far more elongating silhouette it will make your legs look longer but it will sort of cover and still give you that layered look which the shirt wants to do i love the little detail here of the extra overlay around the collar and i love the fact that the sleeves are really really long trini do you ever panic if you're customizing something that you might wreck it um i have wrecked things in the past it's a very good <laughs> question but i think now I'll, there's certain things I'll always do to certain things. So if I get a shirt and I love it and it's just boxy, I'll always curve the corner and have it coming up to the waist. I've done that actually with a, with maybe I've got it here, I don't know. But I've done it with a, an acne shirt. Let me show you if I've got that shirt here that I changed. So this shirt, acne shirt, was just straight across. So I put that little um, kind of cut in there so that when I wear it, I tuck in the front but the back looks longer. And because it has that really nice back of the inverted pleat, I think it looks really good. And I'll show you that actually. This is another way to consider shirts. Shirts should have drama. There should be some shirts in your cupboard. I, shirts in your cupboard that I think have drama. And this is a, such a great shirt I bought from ASOS. Um, Cheryl Custom Service Trinity and I think also has a shirt. But it's a nice clean, uh, pinstripe and it's a beautiful color and it has that big sleeve and the sleeve's not going to get in your soup it's not too long but it allows you to if you sometimes do the shirt and you have a bigger boob and you don't like your boob it will take the attention away from your boob and just give you more going on apart from uh, the sort of unibooing potential of if you did a closed up shirt so I, I actually also like it on women with slightly bigger boobs um, but that's just one of my favorites and it was probably about 39 pounds this is the ASOS shirt which I would with this look tuck it in because I quite like to have that high waistedness at the front and then pull out I always pull it up a bit you know pull it out and over a bit and then I might leave it at the back just hanging a bit so that it has that slight curve around my bottom how would you um, do your makeup to go with that? With the stripe, I always love a red. I might do a sheer red. So I might just do some talus um, on it. Let me have a look. Yeah, I love that red with, with um, stripe. Cancel the lip glow. It gives you a red without making you feel, I'm really, really red. So that kind of, if you look at it in perspective, it feels fresh. It's a lovely day red. It's a lovely day red. Drama and stripe in one. Love. This is another stripe shirt that I got in Japan. And when I was in Japan, I thought to myself, I want to buy one piece of clothing when I'm in Japan that I feel is the classic inspiration of those Japanese designers like Comte de Gasson and Watanabe. And I found this in one of their main department stores. And what I really liked is the way that it was very long at the back. In fact, it's too long for this wardrobe and short at the front. Um, what is, I think the sleeves are just about long enough, but they are, they must be very long on a Japanese lady. And I like the round neck, the collar, and I love the color of the blue. So this to me is, is a, an interesting, unusual shirt. There's pattern in there too, but not as much. Is pattern yes, not something? as much. I think pattern has played a bigger part in my life years ago. And I'm very conscious now that I have to check, does the pattern wear me or do I wear the pattern? How do you know? Well, when you put it up against you and you look in a mirror, you think, what do I see first? Do I see my face or do I see the pattern? And if you see the pattern, really check whether you should buy it. Uh, so if I look at, for example, my favorite pattern shirt, which you all love, is my Victoria Beckham flamenco pattern shirt. Oh, it's heavenly. But it's the color. It's that color blue is a, a, an exquisite color blue and the softness of the pink, and I wear it. Actually, I've got Sasha on right now. That's exactly how I wear it with jeans. One of my 
truly favorite shirts. And then I was on the hunt, because everyone said how much they loved it, for an equivalent. And then I found in Zara, the elephant blue shirt, which Ooh. is nearly identical, apart from there is a pocket. I think they should have done it without the pocket detail, actually. I agree. Um, because I think that's sort of w what makes it not work. And it's quite wide. But in terms of fabric, it's not silk, but the idea is the same. And the print is, I think I, I step away from florals. I think I like abstract or I like little animals or little, little tiny flowers, but a florally print isn't so good on me. So then abstract to me would be like a sort of tie dye thing. I got that in Zara or Kos, hang on. That's quite a big pattern for you. Yeah, it is. No, I got some Zara, but I, you know where I got this? Tell me. I'll tell you something. Zara men's department is really interesting. This is Zara men's department. And if you have long arms, go to Cos men's department or Zara men's department. Because they're tip. two brands that have really fab things and they deal as well, a part of their clientele is a very cool, stylish gay man who's always going to wear things with more confidence perhaps than his heterosexual brothers. So you'll see fun, fab pieces and you think, my God, like last winter in Zara, there was a sequin blazer. Did you buy it? I did, but I had to take it back because it was too broad. What's the most important shirt that a woman can have in her wardrobe? A white shirt, for sure, because a white shirt will go with every color in your wardrobe. I mean, I'd say metallic, but white, white shirt. That white shirt from Zara, great white shirt, really good for boobs too, very clean. I like the double um, depth of the white on the collar because it will be much sharper than just that thin fabric on its own. The fact that it's got an inverted or, or an inset V allows you just to wear it if you have boobs. I like the um, cuff because it's sharp and it's cotton. And also I like the fact that you can tuck it in at the front and let it hang at the back. So that is an A top shirt. Then we have the top shop, the top shop shirt that is probably I have four of. I regret not buying this shirt. Oh, do you, darling? Yeah. I have four. I might give you one, Lucy. <laughs> I mean, I have to say because this shirt is not real fabric. It's it's fake, but I don't get sweaty in it. I love the cuff detail. I love that just sort of little um, kind of slit there and it flops out of jackets and you get that wonderful little detail out of a jacket. I love the fact that it's layered in two bits here so I can tuck in that bit and have this hangover. So sometimes when you're wearing something where you don't like the waistband but you need to show a waist, you can just do that near, near half tuck thing I love with true perfection and at the back it's just one length. It's, it's an, a miraculously good shirt and I love this neckline. It's so sharper than anything. If you can get that neckline without a button, it's it's probably the chicest neckline for me on my neck. This is another great shirt, but I wear the shirt with a jacket on, over it. And it's a sort of, it's like a hunting shirt in terms of you think of those people in those old paintings and they have a stock. But this is uh, just a drape across. It's a clever drape across, but it works really well with a jacket over it. And you just see that sharpness and it gives it gives a kind of drama to your neck. Oh dear, there's the doorbell. Interesting. This is, it's so weird, you're gonna look at this. This is one of three of the same shirt top. It's from Kos and I wear them in the summer. They're a really nice clean white neckline. I like this um, inverted sleeve and I cut the sleeves off this one. It's only short sleeves anyway, because I want to wear this one under lace jackets and jackets which were really tight and I didn't like the double layer of the sleeve where it ended so I did that to that one. I actually thought that was the style, so no, thanks for clarifying. Fun. Thank you, darling. Um, <laughs> and then the other kind of shirt I always love in categories of shirts are shirts with some drama down the front. Um, and this is Massimo Duty, and I think that I've got shirts like this in my wardrobe that cost a fortune. This one was about 49 or 49 pounds, I think, or something like that, but a good price. And I love that pleat detail. Um, some of them also have things on the cuff. This one doesn't, but it's got a double button on the cuff. So it's a really, also for a Spanish brand where a lot of their jackets I find quite short on me, the sleeve was long enough for me. Top three yeah. high street shops to buy a shirt. Um, Massimo Duty, Cos and Zara. And top three designer. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Top three designer, oh. You see my white? A liar. <gasps> Yes, I have one upstairs. Um, this is much harder. Alaya, Celine. Um, hmm, I don't know, I'm to, you see, I haven't got that many expensive white shirts here. Um, 
Chloe. Chloe, for sure. This is a sleeveless Chloe. And this is my sort of sleeveless white top that I wear the most in the summer, nearly as much as the Zara one. They're very similar in shape, but this one has that beautiful embroidery detail. And I'll just, it will make an outfit. That detail is really pretty. Okay, so white shirt's done, Lucy. Thank you. I'm inspired. Okay. I have got shirts upstairs, though. Some wow. more. Is that another day? I don't know. Let's see. 